Did you know that physical inactivity is responsible for 5 million deaths per year? Did you also know that 4.8% of total healthcare costs in Canada are associated with physical inactivity? Did you know that 8% of Canadians who commute to work by biking or walking save the national economy $2 billion every year? The health risks associated with the lack of physical activity are numerous, ranging from physical problems such as obesity, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, poor respiratory health, to mental disorders such as depression. The dependency of people on cars plays a major role in causing these diseases. It is not only car users who are at risk, but also pedestrians and cyclists exposed to pollutants released from cars on the road. The closer and the longer you walk in proximity to polluting cars and the higher your rate of respiration, the more your health is likely to deteriorate. Some of the pollutants you are exposed to include ultrafine particles, nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide, and toxic hydrocarbons. This means that we have a two-dimensional problem, the lack of physical activity and an environment that is not conducive to healthy active transport. In the past two and a half minutes of this video, 28 people have died because of air pollution. So, how can we address these problems? As a citizen of Montreal, there is a lot you can do. You can choose to walk or bike, whether to school or to work, instead of taking a car. If you want, you can take public transport also, but walking or biking are even better. It is a known fact that walking for 45 minutes a day or cycling for at least 25 minutes per day can save you from the leading causes of death by cardiovascular disease. It is also a known fact that if all Canadians engage in physical activity for at least 60 minutes per day, 20% of deaths related to type 2 diabetes and 20% of deaths related to hypertension could be avoided. You are not alone in your efforts to live a more active life. The City of Montreal can help make your environment more active friendly. It can, for example, create a well-connected network of low traffic streets for biking and walking. Close off some streets completely for pedestrians and cyclists. Give priority to improving infrastructure for active transport over other modes of transport. And finally, build more parks and green corridors to shift pedestrians and cyclists from highly congested vehicular routes to a healthier and greener commuting environment.